Episode number 223. It was nothing to her that an innocent man was to die for the sins of his forefathers. She saw, not him, but them. It was nothing to her that his wife was to be made a widow and his daughter an orphan. That was insufficient punishment because they were her natural enemies and her prey and as such had no right to live. To appeal to her was made hopeless by her having no sense of pity, even for herself. If she had been laid low in the streets, in any of the many encounters in which she had been engaged, she would not have pitied herself, nor, if she had been ordered to relax tomorrow, would she have gone to it with any softer feeling than a fierce desire to change places with the man who sent her there? Such a heart Madame Defarge carried under her rough robe. Carelessly worn, it was a becoming robe enough, in a certain weird way, and her dark hair looked rich under her coarse red cap. Lying hidden in her bosom was a loaded pistol. Lying hidden at her waist was a sharpened dagger. Thus accoutred, and walking with the confident tread of such a character, and with the supple freedom of a woman who had habitually walked in her girlhood, barefoot and barelegged, on the brown sea sand, Madame Defarge took her way along the streets. Now, when the journey of the travelling coach, at that very moment waiting for the completion of its load, had been planned out last night, the difficulty of taking Miss Pross in it had much engaged Mr. Lorry's attention. It was not merely desirable to avoid overloading the coach, but it was of the highest importance that the time occupied in examining it and its passengers should be reduced to the utmost, since their escape might depend on the saving of only a few seconds here and there. Finally, he had proposed, after anxious consideration, that Miss Pross and Jerry, who were at liberty to leave the city, should leave it at three o'clock in the lightest wheeled conveyance known to that period. Unencumbered with luggage, they would soon overtake the coach, and, passing it, and preceding it on the road, would order its horses in advance, and greatly facilitate its progress during the precious hours of the night, when delay was the most to be dreaded. Seeing in this arrangement the hope of rendering real service in that pressing emergency, Miss Pross hailed it with joy. She and Jerry had beheld the coach start, had known who it was that Solomon brought, had passed some ten minutes in tortures of suspense, and were now concluding their arrangements to follow the coach, even as Madame Defarge, taking her way through the streets, now drew nearer and nearer to the else deserted lodging in which they held their consultation. Now what do you think, Mr. Cruncher? said Miss Pross, whose agitation was so great that she could hardly speak, or stand, or move, or live. What do you think of our not starting from this courtyard? Another carriage having already gone from here today, it might awaken suspicion. My opinion, miss, returned Mr. Cruncher, is as you're right. Likewise what I'll stand by you, right or wrong. I am so distracted with fear and hope for our precious creatures, said Miss Pross, wildly crying, that I am incapable of forming any plan. Are you capable of forming any plan, my dear good Mr. Cruncher? 